Hi everybody and welcome to TensorFlow Meets. In this episode, I'm meeting with Christian Van Lee Ramsey, who's been doing some crazy stuff with neuroscience and a whole new term called effective computing that you're going to learn all about. Welcome, Christian. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. So we did have another episode with your partner, Hao Han, where she was talking a lot about dyad ex machina, and I know you're working on that too. Could you tell right. us about it? Sure, sure. So dyad ex machina is, uh, again, the dyad part is about two as one. So it's seeing mm -hmm. two as one. And then the machina is about really us working alongside a machine. So it's really okay. a fancy way to say two people working with a machine. Nice, nice. And so what we're trying to build out is this affective layer. And to us, it, it means that well, currently, as it stands, if you look at the neuroscience literature, mm -hmm. uh, emotion is just as important as cognition. Okay. But in today's society, we seem to value cognition over emotion, and we're kind of like, throw the emotions away, get them right. out of here, let's They're make, a, let's yeah, yes, 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 let's make a reasonable okay. decision. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that to make a reasonable decision, you actually have to have a marker, right? An emotional marker that tells you that's the right answer and that one's not the right answer. Interesting. And so we're kind of trying to build this affective layer to bring emotion back to the forefront of what, what the everyday life is already like. Okay. So I can give you an example of that. Okay. Uh, let's imagine we're working on a team and you've got all of a sudden this great idea that you want to tell everyone about. Um, and what's going to happen is most likely you're going to have sympathetic projections uh, down from your autonomic nervous system. Okay. Your blood pressure is going to rise. The skin temperature is going to rise. A little bit of sweat is going to secrete from your sweat gland. <laughs> Sounds like I shouldn't have good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually your body's way of getting you ready to say what you need to say. Okay. And in that moment, maybe a couple of seconds later, you might have some thoughts like, well, what if I said this and everyone thought it was stupid? Uh -huh. Or what if I said this and everyone thought, this isn't a great idea. Mm. And all of a sudden, I've got like brain regions like the periactical gray or even the beloved amygdala are going off at that time. And those emotions are so strong that, well, I'm not going to say anything, right? Okay. And then a couple of days later, someone says it, has a positive reaction, and, you're, and now I'm thinking about it, and now I'm ruminating, and now I'm feeling really complex emotions like, um, just like resentment or regret or even envy. Right. Mm, mm. And so it's like, how do we actually bring that emotional journey and make it live for that person to understand the journey that they're taking with the things in their lives or even the relations with other people? And so that's really what the affective layer is about, is about uh, awareness, making people more aware of that. Okay. So one of the things you mentioned on your site um, that I really caught my eye was like you're working at the uh, intersection of effective computing and deep learning. And so what is that intersection and how does yeah. all that work? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Uh, a long time ago, we started studying the emotion and really effective neuroscience, mm -hmm. which has been largely... Uh, at first, emotions were like, oh, it's a psychological construct, and like, right. yeah, sort of. And then you had people like Yak Pingsap and Antonio Damasio, neuroscientists, who showed like, no, actually, these three brain regions in some sort of temporal fashion unveil when you get the emotion of something like seeking or rage. Right. And so they were able to do the necessary research to show that emotions were in fact real and that they were real science and mm -hmm. you could actually study them. And most of that was done in like rodents and, and then eventually to humans by looking at patients who had lesions in certain parts of their brain and they couldn't have certain types of emotions. Okay. And, and it pointed directly to that. And so the effective neuroscience for us, the part is looking at the deep learning part is how do you understand a physiological signal like heart rate? And heart rate is largely modulated by the central nervous system, by your brain, right? right. And so what you want to know is what affective state is happening in your brain that eventually transmits down to you having a higher or a lower heart rate. I see. And so we're in trying to model that, that's what you're modeling when you're trying to model emotion. You're trying mm. to model something that's happening in the brain. So we thought we needed to understand that so that we could better model these emotions. So that's where the crossroad, and I think TensorFlow uh, points out a really good almost the complexity of uh, classifying those emotions mm -hmm. is you got to have something like a deep learning neural net and you got to have even pushing state of the art like attention networks and going further and TensorFlow provides that for us. Interesting. So you've been using TensorFlow quite a bit? Yes. <laughs> That's good. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so, and so like just trying to get my hands around this would be that so when you can understand the emotions of a person maybe using a product mm -hmm. that will help you build a better product and design something because you're right. reflecting their emotions or right them. right right it's like um anytime you're trying to model something there's this 
there's this unknown right part that your model can't predict. It's why you can't get 100% on every model that you put out there. And a lot of that could be definitely subject to like the user's emotion at that time. Mm. Why they chose to play the game at that time rather than another time could also be like their stress levels were high and they wanted to play video games or maybe the opposite. Mm -hmm. But knowing that gives you that indicator like you're saying of what their state is and what they're motivated to do at that time. So yeah. it's, it's going to be another tool in a developer's toolbox to help them build better products. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We hope that everyone has access to this effective layer. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> now, I know you're also looking for people to help out with this, right? So could you tell us a little about that? Sure. The effective layer is massive. And if you just <laughs> look at all the literature in effective neuroscience, effective computing, it's so much work has been done, but yet there's so much left to do. Okay. And we're not going to tackle it alone. <laughs> we, we do right. wish we could say that, but mm. we're going to need partners and work with people. So we think of it as there's people at the research end of the spectrum and the applications end of the spectrum. Mm. In the research, there's a lab out of Stanford that focuses just on fear. right? And so they're just looking at the physiological um, outputs of fear when, okay. when you see a stimulus that scares you. right? Okay. And so we could actually partner with uh, a lab like that or any such lab and say, okay, how do we bring this into deep learning? And how do we make some sort of continuous algorithm or attention network that's deployed in the cloud to where people who have affective disorders with anxiety or fear or anything like that, we could be predicting when they're going to be fearful of what and then help them get better from that. Interesting. And then on the application side, I think there's a lot of developers to work with who want to create this kind of effective computing stuff, but may not have the requisite or like background or studying in the effective or motion sciences. And there we can help out by saying, okay, how would you label something like disgust? Like okay. that's difficult. Right. And set up the right experiment to be able, or the labeling process and help with that. And then the last part I think is like thinking of organizations. If you want to get the effective like style of your team or something like that. And so we could work with a company to see and is going to be able to further the research mm -hmm. on the effective layer, but also give insights to whoever, whoever we're working with. Right. So effective computing, it's a phrase most of us probably haven't heard of right now, but <laughs> right. maybe all of us will be using it in the not too distant future. That would be great. Wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> <laughs> so nice. thanks, Christian. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of TensorFlow Meets. Uh, if you have any questions for me, if you have any questions for Christian, just please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Thank you.